Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan, and today I'd like to talk about Don't Look Now, the famous 1973 film directed by Nicholas Rogue and starring Donald Sutherland and Julie Christie. I'd like to go through this film, which um, can appear perplexing at first, and um, explain something about the structure of this film, as well as some of the themes that crop up. Now, this film of course is a classic, it's a deeply unsettling, terrifying film but also an incredibly atmospheric film set in Venice of course and the, uh, the location of Venice off season through the labyrinthine canals and bridges etc provides an unforgettable backdrop to this film. There's um, an introduction, four acts and a coda to this film. The introduction is all about the death of a young girl, Christine. And in this terribly sad and tragic opening, there is so much symbolism which sets us up for the rest of the film. Christine um, drowns in a pond in the garden and where she lives. And um, just before she drowns, her father, John Baxter, knows that something terrible is about to happen. He jumps out of his um, seat in his living room and runs down and he sees that his daughter has drowned. And there's that um, powerful scene where you just hear him kind of cry and he brings up his dead daughter in his arms. Um, and this opening scene, you know, it's just full of wonderful symbolism and, uh, and this kind of latent power. We then move to Act One. Act One is about two sisters. John Baxter and his wife, Laura, have um, now gone to Venice in the aftermath of their daughter's death. Um, for John to immerse himself in work, he's an architect, he restores... Um, well, he seems to be some kind of restorer of uh, church art and um, his wife's come along as well. Their son Johnny is in boarding school and I guess they're just trying to get over and come to terms with their grief. But they meet this strange, uh, these sisters um, in a restaurant, one of, them, one of whom is blind and she seems to possess psychic powers. And she sees Christine in her mind. She describes the red back she's wearing. And she says that she's happy. And this, of course, captures Laura's heart. John is far more sceptical. But this lady, Heather, the blind sister, recognises that John has this psychic ability, this second sight. It's in this act that we have this unforgettable and chilling scene where John and Laura seem to be lost in Venice at night and we suddenly hear a window open, a shutter open. This unearthly cry of an animal and this figure dressed in red, this tiny figure dressed in red scuttle off, which of course looks like Christine, the daughter they've lost. John sees this. And the way it's shot is just so chilling. It's, it's just really is um, amazing, actually, the way this is done. And, un, you know, really, you don't, it doesn't leave you. Then we go into Act 2, round about the 36-minute mark. And John is warned through a terrifying vision Heather has of um, his impending doom in Venice. And uh, Heather... And uh, John's wife, Laura, just, want John, just wants John to get out of there. They, they, they think he's in danger in Venice. Um, and then Johnny, their, um, their son, back in England, has been involved in some kind of accident at school. So Laura wants to go back on the next flight to England. So John's left alone. But in Act 3... Just after Laura leaves him on the Vaporetto off to the airport, John sees Laura and the two sisters looking very solemn on the prow of a, a, a gondola. 
and he calls out to them but to no avail. It seems Laura's back in Venice. And John spends Act 3 looking for her. It transpires also that a serial killer is on the loose. A dead body is dragged up from one of the canals. And John, of course, is very concerned about his wife. He wants to protect her. It's also in Act 3 that John himself, whilst restoring a church mosaic, falls off the platform in this freak accident, almost loses his life. So Act 3 is kind of latent with this port, this, uh, this uh, portent of terrible things to come. Then in Act 4, John realises that Laura's okay, he calls back to England, she's there. Laura comes back to Venice. But John here finds this small uh, figure clad in a red mac and goes after this red figure. And in an unforgettable and terrifying climax to this film. John is killed. This, this small figure dressed in a red mac turns out to be this serial killer who is this kind of middle-aged dwarf. And uh, she slits his throat, shakes her head and slits his throat. Such a horrific moment. Um, the first time you see it, it's just, you know, just knocks you for six. Um, after this, there's a brief coda and um, Johnny's back with his, uh, with his mother, Laura, and the two sisters, and it's um, John's funeral. And this is what he foresaw earlier on in the film, just after Laura left for England. So what are we to make of Don't Look Now? Well, I guess if you could sum it up in a sentence, it's about the murder of a father who is grieving for his dead daughter and although he possesses psychic abilities he ignores the warnings um, based of course on a short story by Daphne du Maurier the film is so rich in signs and symbols I mean it just rewards repeated watching I've seen it at least 10 times and every time I watch it I see something new. Some of the themes that crop up include the colour red. Red is this, this thread throughout the film from the red mac of Christine's coat right at the beginning to the red ball which we see both in England and in Venice to the red coat of the murderer, to the red boots of Laura. Red just crops up everywhere. It's like um, a thread running through the film. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. You see it everywhere. The bottom of John's glass as he drinks. Uh, the stand of an ashtray. I mean, it, it gets ridiculous. Um, but it adds to that heightened sense of foreboding to this film and gives it unity as well. There's also the image of um, broken glass. Johnny, just before Christine dies, cycles over a mirror and breaks it. Just as John dies at the end of the film, he kicks a window and breaks that. The idea of reflection is important in the, the canals of Venice, in the water of the pond in which Christine dies. And of course, grief and bereavement is such an important part of this film. A marriage being tested in terrible circumstances. And of course, there's that controversial sex scene in it as well. And also in this film, there's much about misunderstanding. Um, although John speaks Italian to some, uh, to some fluency, there's always this level of 
kind of uh, it doesn't quite get the picture from the people around him. The policeman, the chief of police, doesn't quite understand John. There's these levels of misunderstanding in the film. You could say that's from the very beginning as well. You know, Christine's playing with this doll, which is actually a soldier dressed up like a um, a girl's dolly. It's kind of a very ambiguous feel to this film. And of course there's the idea of sight and blindness. The blind lady Heather cannot see where she's going, she needs to be guided, but she has a penetrating spiritual sight. She knows what's going to happen to John. She seems to be able to see where Christine is, even though she's died. Whereas John, who possesses this gift as well, is kind of willfully fighting against it. It's almost as if he wants to be blind. There's very much a sense of evil in this film as well. The church is very much an ambiguous um, presence in this film as well. It's, it's the site of great danger for John. Of course, he, he, I don't know if he dies actually in a church, but it's in a, certainly in an ancient building, a kind of Renaissance building. But the bishop is rather sinister. So, Don't Look Now is a classic film. I mean, it, perhaps it's a little long in places, particularly in the third act. But it's a tremendous film with superb performances. And if you've seen it before, see it again. Because you always find things in there which, you, which have eluded you before. And of course it's acted superbly by Donald Sutherland, Julie Christie and uh, the others. The other uh, supporting characters as well. Please check out the slideshow explaining the themes and structure and thank you for watching. Bye.